Good morning. May the God bless you wherever you are watching me. This is your Oman Dunkumi. I've come on your way once again, like I said all the time, that every Saturday, God permit, I'll be coming on your way, bringing you the good news, the food to our soul, not only your soul, but my soul as well. Today is another day the Lord God has made us possible that we need to feed our soul with the word of God. Like I said to you the other time, I am not a pastor, neither am a prophet or a deacon and elder. I'm a church member who has a vision to make it one day to heaven. And my Bible tells me that it is my duty to share whatever God has given unto me. And I got to learn that it's not only food, neither clothes nor money that I can share, but I can also share the word of God with somebody because at, at the end of the day, everything that we acquire or we are looking for in life, one thing comes to an end. Money, clothes, whatever, whatever. But when we have the word of God in us, it is the word of God that is taking us to eternity. Therefore, the most important thing that I can share with you that shows that I truly really love you is to share the word of God with you. May not for some of you who are in the world, if we say, so we will be able to share the word of God with you. If we say, so we will be able to share the word of God with you. And we will be able to share the word of God with you. So at this point, like I said all the time, God bless you and may God bless you. May God continue to bless you. May God extend the blessings and the peace with you wherever, any angle in your life that I pray that God will extend peace unto you. As you get this opportunity, I will be loved and to be glad that you share this video with somebody to be also to be blessed. Because I'm not a pastor, but I've come for us to have a chat. What are we going to talk about today? You know, like I said all the time, due to time, so I will blend it with English and my dialect as well so that both of us can have a share with this cake that we are enjoying. So it's going to be a discussion, a long time program that I'm bringing to you that's called Take Out the Mask or Take Off the Mask. In Katasuan is what I'm bringing to you. So let's take our Bible and do our usual thing that we are doing. That as you know, it is a program that don't call me, I am bringing to you. It is the word of God. So let's short, take a short prayer. Then we continue our program. Father, we thank you for how far you brought us. Today is another day you established for us. Today was purposely made that we will have the word of God to feed our soul. Many wish they could have this opportunity. Jesus said unto the disciple, unto the word, he said, Your father Abraham wished he could see this day, but he couldn't see it. So people wish they could hear the word of God, but now they couldn't hear it again. But we had the opportunity. I pray, my father, my Lord, my God. It is not my power, neither my, my strength, but it is your Holy Spirit. I pray that whosoever is listening, that will listen, that will share, that will have the opportunity to have time to listen to this word. May you, God, that is able, descend peace into his or her life. Whatever, wherever in his life that there is no peace, I pray for peace to establish. If there is peace in then I call for multiple peace in the person's life. Father, take hold and take on the Spirit of God. Lead us where you want us to go. Direct us where you want us to follow. So that at the end of the day, we will not be among the lost sheep, but we will be among the sheep that have been kept in a secret place, a perfect place for their destination. We thank you, bless you, in the name of the Father and of the Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you for blessing my friends, my loved ones, my brothers in Jesus' name. Amen. Yo, wonderful Sabri, I didn't find work, was even Sabri. I'm just talking to you, a short program that I'm bringing today. Today's talk, or let's say today's conversation or the topic, I've said deception that every, everybody must know or must watch out. There's deception, deception going on, especially in Christianity. Many deception is going on. The whole world, deception is going on. What is it that we are seeing in life? Especially Christian, Christianity. Nowadays, we don't follow the Bible anymore, but we follow the people saying. That is why your brother, don't call me, I want you to know. That Jesus, the Bible said, we should follow the old path. What is the old path? Even in our dialect, let's say we the Africans or all those Africans, we know in our, in, our, in our country where we are from, we have something we call the old medicines. You know, where, where our forefathers, grandfathers, those who, when we were kids, they would go to the farm, bring out some leaves and this. even some they go around this, around the house, they take some leaves, bring, put them together, put them on fire, and you know, we drink this one, and we are healthy, we don't visit hospitals, we don't go this and that and that. But in the modern days, we neglect all these things, and now we are facing many challenges in life. 
people are having troubles, sickness or sickness, but there are some sicknesses when we record back in our forefathers' time, these things were not the why because they were taking care of themselves. Why is Christianity nowadays? I bring it to Christianity, that's why I went to that. Why is Christianity now suffering? It is true the word of God has said when the end time is at hand, these are the things that will be coming. But why is it like that? Because we are not following the word of God, but we are following our own path. Like when you read according to the book of Genesis, God said unto Adam, he said, Adam, I am your father, I am your mother, I am your friend, I am your everybody. Therefore, I have set a rules for you to obey. But Adam decided not to obey the rules. Therefore, he ate the food, which was the rule that God said, don't touch this. It is when somebody says, don't touch it. It is a rule the person has established. That you shouldn't touch this thing. It is a rule. But yet, Adam refused and he disobeyed God and made his own way. Yet, and God had mercy on him. He did not kill him. But in our day, this is what we are going through in life. Deception is going on everywhere in the church. What is it? Nowadays, gone are the days when you see a Christian sister going to church, the addressing alone tells you that this is a Christian sister. But in our days, we say, no, things are changed. They call modern way. My friend, my brother, my sister, I only want to tell you something. If heaven is your vision, wonderful. So, so you know, when you in India, I am advising you that you must remember what the Bible says. The Bible didn't say there's going to be a modern Christianity. When we call our God, we don't call our God a modern God. What do we call God? We say ancients of this. As soon as you will remain the same. What does it say for me? When you listen to this song, this should summarize everything about Christianity. It says ancients of this. As soon as you are, you remain the same. You change your snoot. He's unchangeable God. So why has God changed? Why has God become a modern nowadays? Our God is not a modern God. He is the Lord of yesterday, today and forever. And the ways of God remain the same. He doesn't change his ways. I want to ask you this question. If you are able to answer this question in a, in a modern way, then Christianity can be modern. But if you cannot answer it in a modern way, then remember deception is what is taking place. Then you must be very careful. Since you were born, or since you, you, are, you, you were born, have you ever seen that the earth that we are working, the earth that we are working on, as I see in Antichrist, have you ever seen that the earth has changed? That you see that before you were born in Nigeria or you were born in, in Africa, you were born in Asia, you were wherever you were born, you were born in America. But you see that now America is in Africa and Africa is in, in America. You've seen it before. It's never changed. Everything remains the same. Since you were, have you ever seen the, 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 the sky coming down and the earth going up? It's remained the same. Have you ever seen the stars coming to the earth to, to establish its, the shining on the earth whereby the sun, is, the sun will come down and then the, the earth will be running to top? You don't see it. What, what is it? It is telling us that as God has made things, so it remains. So brothers and sisters, I am advising as ourselves. Deception is going on in the church. That is why if we don't take care, we will be in the church for all these years. But one day, one day, when the trumpet of judgment is sound, God will tell us he don't know us, according to Matthew 7, 21 to 23, that he said, I do not know you because you didn't do what is right. When you read the book of Matthew, at the same Matthew, when you read Matthew 24, verses 1, uh, verses 4 to 5, Jesus says something unto the disciples when they confronted him, talking about the end time. What is going to happen when the end time comes? They ask him questions, the signs, the symptoms. What is going to be a sign? You know, when a woman is about to be to give birth, there are some symptoms that happen to the body that tells the woman that the child is ready or that the child wants to come around this time. So, you know, the symptoms will tell the woman, even the nurses and doctors, when they see signs of the woman, it tells them the child is about to come or it will take time. So Jesus told them, he said, take heed that no one deceive you. That's verse 4. When you go to the verse 5, he kept on saying, he said, many people will come in my name and will deceive many. That is deception. 4, 5, talk about deception. Fellow brothers and sisters, deception is what is going on in the church now in this whole world. It's deception. 
That is because of deception. Many people doesn't believe God nowadays. Why? Because they think if God is there, uh, now there's some teaching going, they say something called uh, regeneration, uh, reborn or reincarnation. They say when you die, you will come back again. Therefore, if you are a poor person, you will become a rich person. And I don't know if you're a rich person, you become a poor person. I don't even understand. And I don't know if animals die, would they become human beings? And some human beings are thinking when they die, they are going to be a dog, something. When I die, I'm going to be a cat. Fellow brothers, you that is listening to me, there is nothing called regen, re re reincarnation or reborn or whatever it is. I have never been there and I don't know. So I don't know if I've been reincarnation or whatever it is. I don't know. So ever since the whole world came to be, who has been able to come out and say, when I was in some years ago, I was born in, uh, in America. And this was my house, this was, I was a president, and now I've been born back, and I'm in Africa, and I'm here. It doesn't happen. It's a deception that we need to learn from. It's a deception that we have to be very careful. You that is watching it, as you listen to me. Don't let the deception stick into your mind, into your heart. That you will think there is no God. There is God there. There is a judgment awaiting for everybody. Be careful how you handle your life, because one day, one day, whether you like it or not, at, at a point in time, death will call you, death will call me. But what I want to ask you, if you die in case you die, and you go and you see that there is no reincarnation, but yet there is God who is going to judge you, what are you going to say to yourself? It's going to be too late for you. Therefore, I am advising you at this time that you are alive. You have the opportunity to do whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? Why? What is it? Is it because of women? Is it because of men? Is it because of money that you can't follow Christianity? Is it because of uh, houses that you cannot follow God? Let me tell you, if you become a Christian, a Christian, you can do all these things. What is it? I am a man. I have sex. I have a wife. So what do I? I'm a Christian. I like no sex. I am a Christian. I work. I have house of my own. I have car. What do I like? I like nothing. It's, you have, I have kids. You have kids. So what do I like? I like nothing. If I want to buy a drink, I go to the shop. I can buy malt. I can buy a, a Fanta. I can buy Sprite. I drink. It is food. Even, even aside Christianity, aside Bible, even medical tell us alcohol is not good. Smoking is not good. They will tell you drug is not good for the system. Why do they arrest drug addicts? Why do they arrest people who are selling drugs? If it is good, because it's not good. They know it is not good. But because you don't want to, because the devil wants to steal you, to destroy you, he is firstly destroy your body. But one thing you have to understand that upon acquiring all this thing, when you sell drugs, cocaine, we marijuana, cigarette, whatever it is that you acquire wealth. Where do you take it to? One day you will die, you leave everything. Your clothes, you leave them. Your, your shoes, everything, you leave them. You will not own anything in life. According to, according to you, according to Job 21 verse 1, nothing you came from this world and nothing you are taking with you. There is nothing you came to this world with and there is nothing you can take with you. So my brother, you are listening to me. I am not telling you not to do, not to work. I am trying to do a good work. But selling drugs, selling cocaine, selling weed, selling cigarettes, selling alcohol to acquire money. The money you acquire, where would you take to? Let me give you an example. You are buying houses. Many people, many Christians, don't, they are doing the normal job. They have houses. Cars, they have cars. Business, they have business. So you and them who loses, it is you that loses because I don't know the day when you face God and you are being sent to torment, the hell is awaiting fire that quenches you. Know? You leave everything that you fight for, but those things you fight for couldn't go with you. At least your car could have gone with you. That when the fire is too much, you can you can own your air, or air condition or your house you can own you can or you can own your air condition so that you can cool your body. But here we are. You cannot take all this thing with you. There is nothing you can take with you. You can't take anything naked. You can naked. You will go. So my fellow brother, you are the same sister that you listen to. In the life you are living, remember one day, one day there will be a judgment ahead of you. Like I said earlier, it is something called re reincarnation, whatever it is. 
It is a deception because we have never heard somebody who has boldly come out that I was born into this country, that he or she can call the family background and everybody that was around and now tell where he is. We have not seen it. It's a deception that we must understand. We must be very careful that this is what is deceiving people. And Christians also, listen to me brothers and sisters in Christianity. If you have taken Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, then you must know that Christianity has a code. Many codes Christianity has. In, our, in terms of our dressing, we have code of dressing. We cannot dress like the worldly people dress. So if you call yourself a Christian, but you dress anyhow, but when they confront you, you say Christianity is in the heart. I am telling you, sister, I am telling you, brother, there is no where Christianity is in the heart. Why? Because according to the book of Acts, when, the, when Paul and the others went to Antioch, nobody from the people of Antioch went to Paul's and the people's heart. They nobody went into Paul's heart to open the heart of Paul and the, and the followers and open their heart. And they saw that there was Christianity in their heart. It was an attitude. The kind of life they were living, how they were presenting their life, how they were dressing, how the women were dressing, and how the men were dressing. That is why, and they saw how they were talking, how they were easily forgiving one another. Even when the worldly people confront them with issues that they think they can even make an argument with it, they will quench it with a word of peace and say, let it go. It, is, it doesn't matter. It is all about God. It is through this they, they had the name called, these are the Christians. That is a Christ-like people. So fellow brothers and sisters, I am advising ourselves that let us be very careful that we are, if we are making it, we want to make it to heaven, we cannot dress anyhow because we cannot eat anyhow. We can't do anything anyhow we are Christian. No. Let me give you a practical example. Like I took you to the Bible, you know, I gave you according to Matthew 24, verses, five, verses three, uh, 4 to 5, that's why I gave it to you, that's called deception. That I'm also taking some, those, wherever you are in this world, be in America, wherever it is, if you want to apply a visa, American visa, I just want to ask you a question. Can you decide what you want to give it to the ambassador to give it the visa? Or you must, you must fulfill the requirement of the ambassador, the request, the ambassador request. These two questions. You know that you cannot just go to America embassy or Canada embassy or Australia embassy or France embassy and they will tell you we want this document and you will tell them I will not bring them but give them the visa and they say take the visa and go no. They need those things to see that you qualify for. So if you are a Christian, I'm also telling you, you cannot be a Christian and live anyhow as you think it is. No, you cannot dress anyhow. You can't dress anyhow. You can't put on anyhow. You can't do nothing anyhow. You must have a code of yourself, a code of conduct. You must dress a nicely dressed. Or by you need to learn how to forgive you might easily forgive you don't have to keep things in you you want like i said today, today is the whole thing that I'm, we are talking about for this uh, take out the mask or take off the mask it is i brought this one word deception so today we'll talk about some part Next week we'll continue. We'll be continuing and later on we'll put on some other things in. So I'm talking about the dressing now today. Our fellow sisters, whenever you are dressing up to church, whenever you are dressing out, first thing you must ask yourself, if truly this dressing, if Christ descend, would he be pleased with it? It is not only the women. This is the greatest deception in Christianity. Whenever we are talking about dressing code, we talk about women, but we leave the men. A man will dress and put on a trap which will tighten very tight. You will see something hook before him. Then you will think it is his manhood that has, it has come out or you don't even know. This, you cannot be a Christian man, no. A child of God, a man, she can't dress like this. 
You will put on a tightening, something tight so that they will see your muscles. You cannot be a Christian. It's a deception, I'm telling you. Men of God, whenever you are going to church, watch out the kind of dressing you put on. Your coat will be tightening you, fitting you. It doesn't fit. It doesn't speak well. Ask yourself, if it's a woman that put on that kind of tightened clothes as you have put on, what are you going to say? You are going to say the woman is there to seduce the man. But the question I'm asking you, the man, if you put on this thing, are you also not seducing the woman? Do you think women are three? Why did women get married? They get married to men simply because they also have feelings. So there are some feelings that men and women have the same thing. So make a chimney no crystal for we are so for your better man or pass or yeah. Show one tag yes, shame we if you say what tag is shame. If it's a man so what in cat, they also have feelings. So let us be very careful how we are putting on dressing because everything that we are doing it speaks about our Christianity. If you think putting on dressing is nothing, it is only women that must dress modest. No, forget about men. It is our duty to dress well as Christian. So if you see your muscles, you wear L, you wear large, then you must do extra large, you put on extra large clothes. You don't need to show your muscles for people to see. You don't need to show your tight for women to see. You don't need to show your, your bum for women to see. You don't, no, a man must dress decent. So this deception, I'm telling the men, be very careful how you put on the dressing because now in our days, when men are preaching, women are preaching, when they are talking about dressing, it is only about the women. But no, I am telling you, the men dress more rudely, more roughly than even the women. Because a man will put on a tighten, a tighten jeans and you see the bum of shoot and they will put on a... How do you call, uh, they will put some, some I don't know if it is a phone or something, uh, the back pocket. You see it, the back, the bottoms has pushed out and you see something poof on the front here like the mango is, is on jack or something like that. No, you can't. These things, you cannot take it to church. If it is a coat you are putting on, then I'm telling you, there is no need to put on that coat. Once you are dressed and you see that something is hooking in front of you, I'm telling the men, you must... Change that dress because it is no good. If it's the woman that dress the same thing, we condemn it is no good. Then I'm telling the man, it is also no good for a man to dress like this. Today, I came to you with deception. I pick only this side. Next week, we will continue. This is deception. Like I tell everybody, Christian, be careful. Those who don't believe in God also be careful. Because you have believed that the word came to bamboo, it was a ranting, it exploded, whatever, whatever, whatever. But yet, nowadays things are getting gradually, gradually. Sometimes the scientists will come up something and tell you that, yet we discover this, we discover this. Fellow brothers, deception is what is killing you. Deception is what is killing me. Deception is what is killing the church. Because now women don't know how to dress well. Men don't know how to dress well. But when they are talking, they say Christianity is in the heart. Like I told you, Christianity is never in the heart. Christianity is the attitude you, it is attitude you put on. It is the, the life you live shows your Christianity life. So brothers and sisters, whenever, like today I said, I pick on, on this side. Whenever you are dressing, whenever you are putting on, a Christian woman cannot put on that, cannot dress like a prostitute. You can't put on paint your nails red, green, blue. I extended your nails. Do you know what a simple means? You are telling God that God is stupid to give you this kind of nails that is not nice. Whenever you extend your eyelash or eyelashes, or whatever it is, you are telling God God is God doesn't have wisdom that He gave you this short eyelash, therefore you want to do it on your own. A Christian sister, you don't dress like this. Neither can you shape all this the uh, your hair here and, and do a tattoo here to make it deep. No, you can't do it like that. A Christian sister don't do it like that. So to the man. A Christian man, a Christian man will not breach himself. A Christian sister doesn't breach. Neither a Christian man can breach. No pastor who breaches is a man of God. There is no pastor, a pastor's wife, who put on nails and put red lips. When you read according to, according to Proverbs, Solomon said, this is a, a dressing of prostitution. But when you say they say modern, I asked you from earlier on, I said, have you ever seen God changing to be a modern God? The song says, Asians of days, as so as you are, you remain the same. That means Christianity never changes. There is no modern in Christianity. The only thing that remains that Bible says, 
Also, you have frustrated to your tempon. Like I told you, the earth remains the same, so Christianity remains as it is. So if you want to make it to heaven, then you must check your life. Today, I came for the dressing code. But God willing, on Saturday, I'll come with another code. And we are hitting it one by one, one by one, until God tell us to change it. What is it? Like I told you the other time, Christianity, everything that we are all looking for, is to make it to heaven. Your own brother, don't call me. I came purposely so that we'll make it to heaven. But remember, you're going to heaven. It is not by God. It is by you. He has made a provision for you. It is up to you to live according to your rules and regulations of the Bible so that heaven will be your portion. But if you want to make it to heaven, but yet you cannot live according to heaven rules, then forget about it. That It is going to be a very painful thing for you because when you die, God is going to reject you because he has already said according to Matthew 7, when you read 20, verse 21 to 22, 23, when you get and read it and think about it so that it's going to be an issue, a painful issue for you. So so when you miss heaven because of your dressing, when you miss heaven because of the kind of things you put on your body, when you miss heaven because of some woman, when you miss heaven because of men, when you miss heaven because of fornication, when you miss heaven because you divorce, when divorcing is not a problem. But the Bible says when you divorce, then you remain single, but you divorce and get remarried. But because of sex, you couldn't make it to heaven. You'll be in eternal, eternal torment, forever torment. Mm, it's going to be painful. All these things, we are going to talk about it under deception. So the, all these things will come under deception. I only mention them so that you will know them that what these are the things we are going to talk about it. This your woman don't come in. This is what I brought to you. Today, we open the chapter, deception. And that's what we are going to keep on. That today, I talk about the dressing. So on God will on Saturday, I will continue from the dressing, then I will add another to it, then gradually, gradually, my vision for you and I, that our way, our life will not be a wasted. Our going to church will not be a wasted. Our giving to the house of God will not be a wasted. Our praying instruments in the church will not be a wasted. Our Sunday going to church will not be a wasted. Our fasting will not be a wasted. That everything that we are doing in life will not be a wasted. That is my vision. That is why I've come with the word deception. So that you will be knowing that when you see it, you see that you are, it is deceiving you, then you must stand from the wrong to the right. So that when the trumpet is sound or when the, when the rapture is being raptured today, all you your hard work in Christ will not be a wasted man of God. Like I said, nobody is a exception on the side of God. And on the side of God, there is no archbishop, reverend, most, most, whatever. It is. It doesn't matter. It is not on the side of God. When you read according to the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, God did not, the Bible did not say there are, there are bishop souls and archbishop souls, pastor souls, whatever So God said, I don't care about this, a rich man's soul, neither do I care about a poor man's soul. The only thing that I God care is a soul that be obedient unto my word. So I don't care who, you being a rich, you being a pastor, you being an elder, being a deaconess, whatever. I don't care about your position, I don't care about your title. Because when God gave, when God sent you, or when they give birth to you, you were not a pastor, you were just a mere human being. So it is on this world that somebody has given you a title to be called Archbishop, Reverend Moses, whatever, or a king, or a queen, or a president, a minister, a vice president, a chancellor, whatever. All these things, God doesn't care about them. That is why I always tell people that. Your position doesn't stop you of going to church. So if you are a king or a president, you must find a church to attend. And you must remember that whatever you are doing, that you are working for your soul. Therefore, you must work for your soul so that when you die, your soul has somewhere to go. But when you follow people, it's a deception. I'm going to tell our leaders, this is also a deception that I'm going to tell the world leaders that people have deceived them. They have lifted them as if they are above human beings. But in, in the mind of God, they are not above human beings because God is so wise that you cannot beat him. He gave everybody one thing. We all breath one breath. There is no rich man breath. There is no poor man breath. The breath that we breathe, there is no one that has its own different. It's the same air the animals breathe, that the dogs breathe, that the, the chicken, whatever. It's the same air the human, human being breathe. So if you are a king, you are a president, you are a leader, you are a governor, you are a vice president, whatever you are. And because of this position, you could not submit yourself to work for your soul. Then it's not fool, you are not a fool, but you are a wasted thing 
Because when you die, God doesn't care about these things. All that he cares that he brought you to this world. And when you came to this world, the only thing he gave you to you, the command was to go and serve him. But you did not serve because you gave, people hate you and you, you relax on the healing of people. But you remember that according to Hebrews 9.27, God has set appointment time for you that you are going to die. And after the death, he's going to judge you. This is what I'm going to talk about, deception. This deception that I brought out is not for only Christians. It's a general thing for everybody. So that if you really want to make it to heaven, you will tap into it this word. Then together, we flow together so that when the trumpet is sound, kings, queens, presidents, ministers, everybody will have share in God's kingdom. That it's not going to be that when you are low income, then you will go to heaven. It is not like that. We will talk about that. God bless you. God be with you. It will be peaceful. It will be lovely that you will share this video with somebody so that everybody will be a blessing. May God bless you. May the peace of God be with you. Remember, you are the architect of your own life. So how you are building your life, one day, one day, if it is a good house, you will enjoy it. A bad house, you will enjoy it. One day, your architectural life that you are living now will be deterred by God. And when you stand before God, that is where it will, it will prove to you either it was good or it was bad. Be wise. Don't let this word deceive you. Don't let reincarnation deceive you. Don't let position deceive you. Don't think about money. Don't let money deceive you. Neither position. But remember, those who are going out, in, out, in, out, you are not better than them. It doesn't matter your position. You are not above anybody. If you can do this one thing, then you are above everybody. Create your own world and live in your own world that you don't live in this world. Breathe your own breath that you doesn't breathe the air that everybody's breathing. And have your own thing that nobody have it in this life. But if you still live on this world, breathe the same air, be wise, and see that you are nobody, you are nothing. Therefore, remember, God will charge you. God will charge me. You will, whether you like it or not, death will call you. And when God, death call you, you will meet God and you will hear God be with you. We'll meet again on Saturday. This is Oman Don't Call Me. Peace be with you. Bye-bye.